are finishing up a home service, and uh, I'm sure he'll give you a little bit more detail about that. Uh, they've been serving with global, interna global outreach international over these last few years, and so we're delighted, Mark, that you're here. We've been praying for your recovery, and it looks like you're doing good. Welcome. Batteries were working before we started. <laughs> Welcome to the first service of 2024. We're so glad that you could take time to come today. This is a good start that you've done. January is a, a special time. It's a good time to start many new things. January is like the key that opens the rest of the year. So you want to have a good January, a good start of things. Today I'm going to talk about be strong and courageous. That's my theme today. In Japan, people love the New Year's. New Year's is more important than Christmas. You'll see these different decorations of on, um, cards from Japan. To see the first sunlight, wow! People s to stay up very late to see the sunrise. They go to the Shinto shrines and temples for their first prayers. They know they need good luck and happiness and um, health. They pray for health. It's a good time for people to go to um, church, too. But the shrines and temples are crowded with people. Millions go. Time to wear the kimonos, too. You'll see lots of people during uh, the New Year's time with the kimonos. Here's my family with the kimono and my Lovely wife, too. We have the kakizome. It's the first calligraphy of the year. Um, the churches often, um, my uh, one daughter wrote, uh, Faith, Hope, and Love. And um, my other daughter, let's see. Uh, uh, we, we love God. Not that uh, we loved him first, but God loved us first. And uh, instead of Christmas cards, we get New Year's cards. And the postman will deliver them right on that day, on New Year's. You want to eat something long, like udon or soba, so you'll have a long life. Or um, many churches, and uh, all around they make mochi. Mochi is smashed rice with different spices on it, and it tastes great. And there's a special food that we eat, too. It's called osechiyori, and um, uh, it takes a long while to cook and bake this, this thing. Instead of the Christmas tree, we have the kodomatsu. It's a bamboo and a pine tree that welcomes the uh, good luck for the year. January is a door for the rest of the year. It's the key for the rest of the year. And um, so many things will come into our lives. Um, 
There's going to be many changes that come this year. There's going to be some big changes, some very small changes. Some changes are going to come very slowly and gradually, but some changes will come very fast. And they'll, sometimes they come just a few, but sometimes they come many. Sometimes there are too many changes that will come. You'll get overloaded, and you'll be burned, burned out if you're not prepared. There's going to be changes for in your own life. There's going to be changes in your family. There's going to be cha changes in your job um, and in the church. In this church, there's changes coming. So we know that change is going to come, but sometimes the rate of change, it's coming too fast, please stop. I need to rest, I need to process all this. So, but we need to be prepared for it. Um, this last term, uh, we spent nine years in Japan, and um, usually a, only four years and come back home, and then four years again. But nine years straight. Um, uh, one reason, because of the COVID, we stayed longer than, than uh, we expected. And then um, just this last year, the pastor that I was working with, he retired. And then um, two churches where I was teaching English, that uh, uh, a new person came to come and take over that job. And I had a few other churches that I was working at. Different other people have taken over their work. So it was God's timing to come back home. So in August, we came back home, and we're glad to be here. In the Old Testament, there was a big change that was going to happen. A huge change. The two main characters are Joshua and Israel. Joshua and Israel. There's going to be a big change in their lives. If you can look at uh, Joshua 1. We want to talk about Joshua 1, 1 through 9 today. And Joshua 1 reads this. Now it came about after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' servant, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. So now arise, cross this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, to the sons of Israel. Here, God is directly talking to Joshua. Do you see what he says? Moses is dead. Ooh. God is very blunt. He's dead. He's not going to lead anymore. You can't go behind him anymore. You, you're not going to get any advice from Moses anymore. You have to take your advice directly from me now. You have to be the leader. There's a big change for you, Joshua. And of course, Israel is listening too. Moses is dead. There's going to be a change, but God's timing is perfect. He leads people to pastors to retire. And that's what we've seen with Pastor Jay. It was his time to retire. And um, ma, I've been working with, uh, in ministry in Japan for ma, 30 years altogether, and it's uh, getting around time to, for me to retire too. Um, at this time of ministry, uh, at this time, ma, at this church, there's going to be a change of leadership. And so we need to work together with the elders and the deacons and the leadership team. We need to especially be praying at the start of this year that God might lead the church 
according to the path that he wants us to take. Did you notice how this change is going to happen? There needs to be servanthood. In verse 1, now it came to be pass after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' servant. Moses was servant of God. He did many things. He was a great leader. But some things he did, very small things that he had to, to do. In this church, we need uh, servanthood. There are many jobs and tasks that maybe the pastor and other people have done. But now, you can step forward and serve God. Anyone can serve God. Servanthood is a high calling from God. To be called a servant of God is great. In verses 2 through 4, God has a plan. And he, re he reveals his plan to the people. Moses, my servant, is dead, so now arise, cross the Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, to the sons of Israel. Every place on which the son of, sole of your footsteps, I have given it to you, just as I spoke to jo Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and as far as the great sea toward the setting of the sun will be your territory. God gives a great revelation to Moses. Uh, to, not Moses, to Joshua, yes. It gives him a, a new vision and hope for the future. I will give you this land. This is the Result of the dreams and hopes and the covenants and the promises that God gave to the people of Israel from the time of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob to the 12 tribes of Israel, to all the Israelites. This is the time to take the land which I have given to you. God has perfect timing, and now his plan is to be fulfilled. He gives another promise. No one can stop Joshua. No one. No one will be able to oppose you all the days of your life. Now, Joshua played a leading role in defeat, defeating the first enemies called the Amalekites just after they came out of, the, uh, out of Exodus. Then he was one of the spies, one of the, ten, the 12 spies that went out, and he saw the Philistines and the tall giants called the Anakites. All the other spies got afraid, and they said, no, we can't defeat these people. We, ha we have to turn around, go back to Egypt. Ma, Joshua and Caleb said, no, no, we need to go forward. But the majority won, and it was a great uh, failure. But God gives here to Israel, no one can defeat you. In the New Testament, God says in, eight, in Romans 8, 31, if God is for us, who can be against us? If God is for us, who can be against us? That's the God we have, an all-powerful God who can strengthen us if we trust in him. 
We trust in his word. And he gives another promise. God will be with you, with them. He says this, just as I have been with Moses, I'll be with you. There's a continuation. God was with Moses. He'll be with you, Joshua. I will not desert you or abandon you. God will continue his presence and uh, he will be with you. He says this later on in verse uh, 9. God is with you wherever you go. Before when I went to Japan, I was thinking, oh, is God going to be with me in Japan? Uh, and it took a little while to, as I went there, this 30 years ago, and I had to learn, yes, God is here in Japan with me. And then uh, strangely, now after 30 years, I've been ministering in Japan and, and preaching and teaching, then it's like, is God going to be with me? in America? Oh, yes. And my wife and I and the children, yes, God will be with us in America. God has not abandoned us in America. God is with you in America. And so we need to trust in God. He gives us he gives us promises, but he also gives a command. Be strong and courageous, for you shall give this people possession of the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn it from it to the right or to the left, so that you may achieve su success Wherever you go, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified nor dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Today's sermon is four words. If you can remember this, you got the sermon. Be strong and courageous. Let's everyone say that. Be strong and courageous. That's the whole message. Be strong and courageous. Let's say it again. Be strong and courageous. This is a theme throughout the Bible. Be strong and courageous. Moses said it to Israel. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes, uh, goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. God says it to Joshua here three times. If God says it three times, it's very important. God said it to Joshua and uh, then uh, Joshua said it to the Israelites. David said it to Solomon when Solomon was going to be king. God, uh, Hezekiah said it to his military leaders when, this, when uh, the king of Assyria came to attack and to annihilate the Israelites. The Apostle Paul says it to us too. Be on your guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous and be strong. Do everything in love. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Yes, we need strength. The Apostle Paul says to Timothy, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And in the book of Psalms, too. Wait for the Lord. Be strong. Take heart and wait for the Lord. 
It's a theme throughout the Bible. Be strong and courageous. Why did they need this command? Why do you? Why do we need this command? Because we have physical weakness is one part. In uh, October, I took a nosedive off of a ladder and uh, wound, it up, wound up with a broken collarbone and six broken ribs. At that time, I felt pretty weak. I couldn't put my shirt on. My son was very helpful to help me put on the shirt. Not, nothing over my head, my button up. Even the button up hurt a lot. Getting in the car was really hard. And whenever my wife was driving and turned the corner, oh! I couldn't put on my socks. I couldn't put on my shoes. Basically, for a whole month, I've been sleeping. I'm doing some rehab now. But thank you for those who have been praying. I felt physical weakness. God says, said to me, be strong and courageous. But then there's also spiritual weakness that comes into our life. The battles that we face are not against individuals, but against this world, against our own flesh, and against Satan who attacks us. In our lives this year, there's going to be new territory that you're going to walk on. There's going to be new areas that you have never experienced before. There's new pathways that you're going to have to take. So what are you going to do? We need to be strong and courageous. We need God's guiding, guidance for our lives. One of the um, most important resources that we have is prayer. Prayer is vital so that we can know where to go. God is only a phone call away. You can use your smartphone to call God. You can call God by email. Talk to God by email. You can text God, too. God's listening. Let's put God back into this modern age. We can communicate to God. God wants to communicate to us, but we have to reach out to God. We have to pray. The other resource that we have is God's Word. In verse 8, the book of... Uh, God says, The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it, so then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will achieve success. God says to Moses, let, not, let it not depart from your mouth. Talk about God's word. Talk about it at home. Talk about it at church. That's why we have, I think we still have cell groups, right? Cell groups? Uh oh But you can talk about it to other people. And we need to do that. And then we need to think about it. And even meditate upon it. Put it into our brains and let it soak in. And the last one, it says, take time to do it. We have to put actions to our faith. Actions that connect with God's word.
A daily reading of God's word is so important to get strength, spiritual strength, and spiritual courage that we need. I went to a neighbor just yesterday and um, had a card for her and a, a book, uh, the first Christmas. And uh, she said, uh, I said, oh, how was your Christmas? She said, oh, it's been terrible. This person has died, and this person has died, and this, someone's in the hospice, and, and this other person. I go, oh, wow. And then I walked away, and I thought, oh, I should have said, I should have said something to her. So I yelled across the street, I'll be praying for you. She said, thank you. But it took courage for me to say that. One of the other teachers at the Joel School had some problem. And uh, to one of the teachers, I said, let me pray. And I prayed. And you know, God answered that prayer within a day. And she said, I'll credit all the, all the, the results to you. I said, no, no, to God. Be careful to do it. If you're riding in the countryside, it says, pass with care. We have to do things with God's word. We have to be careful. And it says, don't turn from the left or to the right or to the left. And maybe you have a good car and it's all balanced. Um, the wheel alignment, alignment is fine. And, uh, but if it's off, then whoop, it's not going the right way. And uh, the other day it was in Kroger or, or uh, Costco or somewhere. I had a, these cart. You have the cart? You're pushing the cart and you go, whoop. And you come on, I want to go straight down the aisle. Whoop. I can't control it. It's going to the right. And when we go to the right or to the left, uh, we, get into, we get into trouble. God says here, don't turn from the Bible to your right or to the left. Go straight ahead. Accept the word of God as it is. Go straight. What is the opposite of courage? The opposite of courage is to fear, to panic, and to be dismayed. My fear it means is basically running away from things. Escaping things. The opposite is standing firm. Not moving. Be tough. Go forward. We can be discouraged by many things, by criticism and by change and transitions this year. But stand firm. Go forward. And being strong and courageous doesn't mean to be puffed up with pride. Hey, I can do it. No, 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 no. There's a hum humility that's required. Being bold and courageous doesn't mean you're unloving, rough, or crude. No. It's being loving. Being strong and courageous is being humble and loving, but to stand for God. It's not easy. Did you notice that God gives promises and then he gives a command? It helps us to understand God's promises and then we can fulfill his commands. God says that he will be with us 
always. Today we sang a song, Emmanuel, God is with us, and God will be with you. Wherever you go this year, God will be with you, and God is for you, not against you. What was the result of Joshua's life? Was he successful? God says, if you, Joshua, if you obey me, you will have success. Twice in this passage. You will be prosperous and you will have success. Don't you want success in your spiritual life this year? Yes. Joshua, believe God. And by faith, Israel crossed over the road. Jordan River. They began to, by faith, they saw victories. By faith, they saw the walls of Jericho falling down. By faith, Israel began to win battle after battle. Joshua followed God, and 33 different kings were conquered. It took seven years of constant battles, but Israel won. Israel inherited the land that God had promised them ages ago. Every place where they they went, they took the land. And at the end of the book of Joshua, it says this. Joshua says to the people, he gathers the people, he says, not one of the Lord's good promises to Israel failed. Everyone was fulfilled. Every promise that God makes will be fulfilled. And we can enjoy those fulfillment of those things. In this year, there are many transitions that are going to happen to us individually, to this church, and to your family. But how will we respond? May we face those problems and those changes with strength and courage, being brave. We rely on God's promises and God's word. Those don't change. May this year we have many victories for Christ, for his honor and glory. What kind of heart do you have? For this year, what kind of heart will you have? Will your your heart melt? Or will your heart be like a lion? My prayer for all of you today is you'll be strong and courageous. You'll have a heart like a lion. Be, Be strong and courageous. Let's all say that together again. Be strong and courageous. One more time. Be strong and courageous. And the third time, God said it three times, be strong and courageous. Amen. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for the promises that you give us. You give us so many promises, and you said that no one will defeat us as we trust in you. We, will see, we can see victories in our life. Lord, give us the faith to believe that you will be with us. Your word is true, and we can rely on you. Lord, help us to have a, a heart like a lion. Be strong and courageous, Lord. Give us that today. Help us, Lord, now as we open the door for January and for this year. May we walk into it by faith. In Jesus' name, amen.